everyone, it's Recky, and today I wanted to do something a little bit different and talk to you about Second Life. So, there's a whole bunch of things I could say about Second Life, and there's a whole bunch of tutorials out there for various specific things. But really, what I wanted to do today is kind of give you a little bit of an overview of what being in Second Life is like. And I thought I'd take you around to a couple of different places, let you see the different kinds of activities and things that you can do here in Second Life, and explain to you a bit about how Second Life works. Because Second Life is different from anything else that I have ever experienced. A lot of people call Second Life a game, and they're not far wrong. Um, some people call it a simulation, and that's also pretty correct. Uh, it does simulate life in a way. It lets you um, experience things and build things, and there's no end to what you can do inside Second Life. But it also has components of lots of different other things. And being inside Second Life and seeing Second Life is a lot easier than me trying to explain it to you. So, uh, at the moment I'm working on putting some fence up around the compound at Nippon. But let's just take you on a quick tour. So let me get into a better lighting situation here. Right now, I am looking at the world through my viewport, and this is my avatar. I can actually push my camera all the way forward and set it up using different controls down here under the eye so that I'm looking through my character's eyes or over the top of her head but I find it easier to track where she is in space if I zoom out and put her in the frame a bit. Your avatar is how you're going to interface with the world around you. What you do with your avatar, how you set your avatar up is what people will see of you. What you see in your viewport and all of the controls here on your UI are the way in which you interact with the world of Second Life. So right now what I am currently seeing is sections of Nippon because I'm behind the gallery and I was trying to put fence up around here. This is a floating series of platforms and there is a mainland down below me and I can fall off these platforms, you will not take damage. Your character doesn't die in Second Life. So if I fall, that's okay, but it's inconvenient because then I have to worry about getting back up here. And one of the things that we're trying to do is make these areas easy to navigate and easy for people to experience what's going on around them. So right now it's night and uh, what I'm going to do is just change my environmental settings so that we can see things a little bit better. So now I'm set to midday instead of following the cycle of the area. And this is my character or my avatar. This is Reki. And you can put clothes on your avatar shoes as you can see i'm having some trouble with things not fitting properly i'm having some trouble with getting her clothes on her correctly I'm not quite sure what happened here but uh, let's fix some of this i'm gonna go ahead and fix this by using my ui to do that so she looks correct and let's go here to this just so I can get her set up correctly all right so her feet are incorrect but I'm not sure why 
that's flat, that's mostly flat. There we go, they're right now. Okay, so you can come in, you can change your character's look entirely, but you build your character from the ground up. You build your character by choosing a body, which in this case I'm wearing the Maitreya mesh body. And when you saw me go here and turn this HUD on, this HUD controls how my body looks. Uh, so if I'm wearing clothing, for example, and body parts are poking out, or for example, I have a long shirt, long sleeve shirt on and my arm is showing through, I can just go through and turn off parts of her body so that they don't show through her clothing. I can put different layers on her so I could layer a bra and a tank top and a jacket if I wanted to by putting them on different layers. I can change her skin. Her body comes with a certain number of skins and I can change her skin. I can swap her back and forth between the different types of skin. I'm not gonna go into that right now. Uh, how realistic her breasts and other body parts look. I can change whether she looks glossy or shiny. Uh, whether her skin is a different color, if I wanted to make her look like an alien, I could do that. I can change how her hands and feet look and are automated. So I can change her hand and nail color, for example. Let me put her here into like a pose you can see right now. She's wearing this cute little shell pink on her fingers, but I could easily change that to a red. There we go. You can kind of see she's in the red now. I'm going to put her back in the shell pink. So there's a lot of things you can do with the body. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is pick a body. If you're playing the free version of Second Life, then there's plenty of free bodies out there. But I'm wearing the Maitreya body. I went to, I went with the thought that if I was buying a game, I would probably spend anywhere from 10 to $20 on the game anyways. So I put that money gradually over time into purchasing an avatar that I wanted. I customized my avatar so that I was happy with her. Um, the second thing you're gonna wanna do after you figure out what body you're gonna be in is you're gonna wanna pick a head. I am currently in the Lelutka Lily head and this is not the way this head normally looks. Let's just say that when the character comes in the head has a certain shape and the body has a certain shape. And then you can purchase pre-made face shapes and pre-made body shapes. And what those do is those allow you to change the appearance of the character without having to go in and fuss with the dials yourself. Basically, you buy a shape, you just apply it, and boom, it's done. What I have done with Reki is I've gone through each of these tabs for her body and for her face, and I have customized all the different things. So I've customized her body, her head, her eyes, her ears, her nose, etc., until she looked exactly the way I wanted her to look. And then instead of wearing the base Matreya skin, which were parts of the HUD, I went in and I gave her a custom skin that I purchased from somewhere else. And just like the body, the head also has a HUD. And in this HUD, I can do everything from pick how glossy her skin looks to changing her lipstick just like that. I can change what her eyebrows look like. I can give her different eyeshadows or I can even change body parts. I can come here and I can actually change the color of her eyes. Right now she's wearing these light brown eyes but I could give her 
blue eyes if that was what I wanted. I'll go back to this because this is what I liked on her. So you can pick your character shape and make whatever you want. You're not limited to standard avatars like you would be in a particular game. And moreover, one of the greatest things about this is that you can literally change a character's apparel on the fly. So if I don't like the shirt, because as you see, it's big and baggy. I mean, I love the D&D logo on it, which is why I picked it up. But unfortunately, it doesn't fit her very well. And if I don't like that, I can just pick another shirt for her out of my inventory. I can go to my clothing and I can look for tops. And I can just decide, oh, let's try this top instead. And I have to make sure there's different kinds of bodies. So I have to make sure that I pick the one for the correct character. That top I have apparently not actually opened. So let's pick something that I'm actually sure we have. Let's go here. So I can pick this sweater, let's say. And all I have to do is add it and it will include it in her outfit. And if I want to remove this top she's currently wearing, this red top, then I go to what is on her worn tab and I pick where I know that piece of clothing is and I detach it. So you can do a lot. You can totally change the look of your character. You can actually change your character's outfit every day. These animations that my character is running, the way she breathes, the way she moves her eyes or occasionally gives a slight smile, all those are controlled in the head and body head. So there's a lot of different things you can do. And for some reason, I am not happy with part of our leg is poking through the back of these pants and I don't know why so we'll just try to get the HUD on and we'll fix that so your character is basically you it can be the real you and I have seen plenty of people actually do that where they make a character that looks just like them whether that's an older person or a heavy person or a thin person or a model whatever they want to look like they can look like they can look like themselves there are also plenty of fantasy characters here in second life so you will see everything from animals to animal hybrids like uh, human pegasus crossbreeds or um Whatever people want to do, they can do. And you can go to many, many different places. There are fantasy places like this, where things are obviously, you know, not very realistic. They're done kind of in a fantasy style. And then there's places that represent more real world looking areas. You can do lots of different things in Second Life. You can, this is my business. So I'm actually building a business and when you see me adding things to the gallery or adding fencing around the area, that's me making this whole area look like what I want it to look like because I'm trying to sell my drawings which are on the posts or the um, easels here. You can go clubbing. So for example, let's try going to back to the 80s. <laughs> This entire area represents a club. So you can come here and explore this. Uh, there's a coffee shop and a place to sit over here. But the main focus of this small area is this club called Back to the 80s. And you can come in here 
and when there is actually a DJ playing the DJ can talk to you they you can click the music notes and hear the music that's playing you can dance for almost all clubs in Second Life they will have a live DJ which means that there's a person actually up here on stage who is running the music from their computer who is on a mic from their home talking to you and you can actually hear the music and interact with the DJ you can actually if you want to dance in this case it back to the 80s you can just click the dance floor and pick a dance that you want your avatar to do or you can test out several different dances um, a lot of times if there's a, a real DJ up here you will have a host with them who is handling the people in the club while the DJ is handling the music so there's a teamwork effort going on here people in the club actually take tips the tips are in Linden's the Linden's are Second Life's version of cash. You can buy and sell Linden's. You can use them to purchase things in Second Life. Or if you work inside of Second Life, you can cash them to an account and then cash them out into actual real world, real world money. And that's what a lot of us do. We hold down side jobs in second life and we make money at them and then we cash out at the end of the month or every two or three months another uh, example of another club that was back to the 80s this is industry this is another one of my favorite clubs i also happen to work at both of these clubs which is why they're my favorites um, i really enjoy working at both of these clubs and this one actually has a dj going right now and people actually in the club dancing and if you see a character kind of come in like when you come in or when they first come in and it appears that they're naked, just give them a couple seconds. Their clothes have not yet actually resed in. But this particular club is, you know, good for different types of dance music, industrial rock, that sort of thing. Whereas Back to the 80s is more 80s. And this is a bigger club with more seating areas. Um, less outdoor stuff but more indoor space for this particular club um, another thing you can do in Second Life let me see if I can find my landmarks folder your landmarks folder is where you're going to have all of the different web addresses that lead you to different areas within Second Life. So uh, one of the things that you can do in Second Life is go to art galleries. So it's not just mine, it's also different art galleries and stores that you can go to around Second Life. It takes a bit for things to res in, especially if you haven't been there in a long time or you have never been there. Um, but this is actually a store. And as you can see, what they've done is set it up so it looks really beautiful. And you've got uh, a lot of thematic stuff to make you feel welcome. And one side is apparently going to be men's clothes. And this is where you would purchase things to clothe your avatar. The other side, I guess, must be women's clothes. Let me see, where else can I take you? Let's take a look at this. Places tend to come and go in Second Life. So sometimes you have places that are set up for specific things and sometimes you have places that have been cleared out because people are no longer using them. So this is apparently a cove with surf. It looks like there's somebody out in the surf with a surfboard. Oh, nope, that's a buoy. Uh, but you could probably take a surfboard out here and surf. 
with all of these waves. Some of this property around here is probably for rent, so you could probably come in and build your own house. It looks like there's a little house up here and maybe one over here, so people are obviously renting here. It's a lovely looking area, and I bet it would be a lot of fun to come surfing here. There's lots and lots of different things you can do in Second Life. If you can do it in your real life, you can simulate doing it here in Second Life. And the Second Life equivalent works much like the real life equivalent. If you're surfing, you have to have a surfboard. You go out into the ocean. If you're dancing, you need to have uh, the ability, whether it's through the floor at a club or a dance ball, to dance. You have to have the dance animations. If you want to cook then you buy cooking gear and you do simulated cooking in second life if you want to uh, drive a car you buy a vehicle and you drive a car in second life if you want to boat you buy a boat and you drive the boat in second life so all those things simulate your real world experiences and this makes second life kind of invaluable for people who physically are unable to do these things in real life because you can live vicariously through second life in a lot of ways um, let's have a look at this gallery get the whole thing to resin because I'm having some problems with that there am I I came in between two areas so let's see this may not be what it used to be this used to be an art gallery called the Janus gallery and instead I poured it in it says it's the Janus Manor but it doesn't look like there's anything in it anymore or maybe I poured it in on the wrong side basically you get from one area to another by teleporting and if you go out to a section of mainland there are areas you can just walk from one area to another in an unbroken line just as if you were in real life but a lot of these other places you have to teleport to get to There are virtual amusement parks here in Second Life. Um, if you're lonely, there are dating clubs. There are churches here. There are classes here that can be taken. Uh, some of your real life businesses have representation here in Second Life. For example, AT&T still has a building here. So you will definitely find things that you recognize here. It looks like this is a dance club, but there's also artwork, which is lovely. This is probably not a real person. He's probably here for flavor. He's not actually a, yeah, he's a, he's an animated character and not, there's no person actually behind him. But you can come in here and you can, um, look at the art you can tour it with a friend you can go on dates in second life there's a tremendous amount of real world stuff to do there's also a tremendous amount of fantasy stuff to do just like in real life you can play games board games role-playing games all that can take place within the simulation that is second life you can either you know do a tabletop experience or you can actually do you can actually go to a location that represents a specific setting and role play in that setting so if you see my video that I made uh, about a year ago on in silico that's what in silico is in silico is an actual setting like this it's built but when you are there in in silico, you are considered to be your character. It's like being on a movie set where you are acting like the person 
you are representing in a movie or in the role playing situation. So I think that's what confuses people in Second Life so much or it confuses people who have never been to Second Life. They don't know whether it's supposed to simulate the real world or whether it's a game. It's not strictly a game because when you come in, you're not actually playing something. There are no goals. There's no one particular theme. You're basically living out your fantasy life. And you can live it out as realistically as you choose or as fantastic as you choose. I have friends who have avatars who are fairies. I have friends who have avatars that look like fox people. Whatever your dream is, you can pretty much do it in Second Life. And if you are stuck at home and you can't get out of the house, you are still sheltering in place, you're too ill or you're disabled, you can't spend a lot of time out of the house or maybe you're bedridden, all of these make you a great candidate for having some fun in Second Life because you will meet people from all over the world here. I've been showing you mainly areas that are devoid of people at the moment simply because I don't want to film other people without permission and it's just easier to kind of show you how Second Life works without having people around that I have to talk to or deal with. But you can talk to people from far away just by using the chat feature. And if you have a friends list, such as I do in my contacts like this, you can just contact the people, their tabs will show up here, and you can talk to them as you would with any other messenger service. Or you can get right up next to them face to face and talk to them using the nearby chat just like this and it will show up right here and nearby and anybody nearby you will see it and be able to say something to you or respond back there is a lot more that I could show you in Second Life and there's a lot I could teach you how to do in Second Life but I'm not going to go that far with this just be aware that Second Life probably isn't what you think it is or maybe even what you've heard it is. It's a visual social platform where you can do just about anything. You can do simulated real life activities or you can play games. So let me just show you what I mean by that really quickly. And let me see, I was asking if there was a link to this and there's not. So I think we have to cut back through industry. Industry has a game room. So I wanted to we'll just cut through this way. So here's the game room. And we'll just go. All right. And here we are in the game room. So I can literally sit around with friends at these tables and play all of these different games with other people wherever they are in the world. And it's a visual representation. So while you can easily go into your web browser or you can buy a game through Steam and you can play those games with other people, you never actually see them. If you're in Second Life, you'll see the avatar sitting around and it's a lot more personal and it's a lot more warm. It feels more like you're actually connecting with real people because you can see the people around you. It's not just an experience of seeing the game board or seeing the results of your actions or chatting with someone. You are seeing something as well as talking to them. And to me, that's one of the things that makes Second Life one of the most valuable platforms available in the world right now. At any rate, um, that's all I've got for you right now. I hope this little overview and tour gives you a better idea of what Second Life is all about. 
and I hope to see you around Second Life. If you ever get into the world, uh, feel free to message me, tell me you saw me on the video, stop by my island in Nippon and drop a note card into the mailbox outside my house, or just shoot me a text if you see me online. You guys take care. Bye-bye.